When we think about racism, we often uh, think about things that are very obvious and overt. So uh, most people will have seen those terrible videos of people being racially abused on buses or trains, and it's very obvious what's going on there. But of course, not all racism happens in that way. Some racism is much more subtle uh, or invisible to many of us in society. Uh, and because it's invisible, it's harder for us to identify exactly what's going on there. For example, can you imagine living in a society where people with your skin colour, with your appearance, never show up in television shows or in the movies? Or where the textbooks used by children at school never represent people that look like you? Those are the kinds of things that are invisible, often invisible, but which have a significant racist effect. What has happened over time is that racism, as it is called, is essentially about uh, disempowering other groups in society based on um, a social construct. We, we can decide what that race is. For example, racism uh, against Muslims. Now, Muslims are not a race. Muslims are people who belong to a certain religion. So you can be um, a Muslim from uh, uh, Indonesia, you can be a Muslim from Australia, you can be a Muslim from China, you can be a Muslim from anywhere. So it's got nothing to do with race. And yet we can be racist towards these groups of people. So it's a social construct. It's based around how we see people as different. I think the most subtle examples of racism uh, happen in what's called institutional racism or through what's called institutional racism. So that's racist behaviours or actions um, that are so much of a part of the way we think and the way we live that we think it's just the way it is. And we don't call the racist underpinnings or we don't even recognise the racist underpinnings. Another example are things that we may not even always notice, like body language, the way people might hold their bodies when they are near people with a different racial background. Uh, do we clutch our possessions closer to ourselves as if we're being threatened? Or do we uh, subtly send out messages of ignoring people uh, because of their racial difference? So in many ways, these kinds of hidden forms of racism uh, can be just as damaging as the more overt forms. It exists within groups of people and between groups of people. Um, in England, yeah, I got called a Paki when I was in school. Paki, everyone assumes that you're a Pakistani if you're brown skinned. So, yeah, so I had that a traumatic experience. Um, but but it wasn't, you know, for that one person who calls you a Paki, there'll be 10 others who don't see your colour. So, but somehow the, the painful experiences also um, maybe has a more effect on us than the not so painful ones, but I still remember that. You're always taught that, you know, you, you don't want to be that different person that people look at and it's really weird and going over there and you are, you're different and people are looking at you and you don't know why and you're like, oh, it's really strange. Um, I don't know, I suppose that was really challenging for me, um, but it taught me a lot about that whole white privilege. Um, we did get treated differently and it wasn't, after they talked to us, they'd take one look at us and go, oh, you know, obviously they're, you know, from so-and-so countries and we're going to treat them differently. One of the things that comes to my mind quite often is um, when things are assumed to happen on the basis of merit. So you're the best for this job or you did the best work in this because um, it was just it met the criteria in the best way. So we think that we've made a decision based on merit, but in fact the way we've created the job sec selection criteria, the criteria for um, um, passing an exam, the criteria for getting into a particular group or whatever, is actually based on our own assumptions, which are about what we think is the right thing um, which comes from our culture and therefore is inherently racist. Often I forget I'm an outsider until people ask me, Damika, where are you from? And then I, I have this funny answer in, inside my head 
uh, well, I'm from my mother's womb, but I never said it. Um, but as soon as they ask, where are you from? It just hits me, you know, like a brick. Ah, you know, I'm different. They're seeing me as different. So yeah, I get asked that quite often. So those are the sorts of things I think that are most subtle and that are often just missed. And, and when people talk about them, it almost sounds like it makes sense. And we think, you know, that's right. I can't see the racism in that example. And that's because it's so much a way of the way we live that it's invisible to us. So critical thinking, critical reflection, absolutely vital in those sorts of situations.